bad, 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 bad dating, dating in Chronicles, where we talk about, <clears throat> let's see, miscommunications, bad hookups, bad dates, anything under the sun when it comes to this sus, sus aspect when it comes to dating. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? I can't complain. I'm still living and breathing, so that's enough for me. That's perfect. All right, so you have a BDC, do you not? I have the worst BDC. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm, I'm alive, so. <laughs> All right, I, well. I have a crazy one. All right, well, so. the floor is yours. Go ahead. Okay, so I want to preface this that I was in college okay. and that I'm not the type of person that exaggerates stories, like mm-hmm. exactly. The way I'm telling it to you right now is exactly how it went. So, I was in the gym. This is probably like my junior year of college, mind you. So I should have had a little bit more sense. But I was in the gym and I was getting huge. I'm gonna tell you exactly how I met him. And you know how sometimes you can feel that people are looking at you, like that happens. He was doing that, but he was doing it without looking away. Like he was just blatantly staring and it was very uncomfortable. I remember thinking like, is he for real? Like still? And it was so bad that I was like, excuse me, like, do you need this seat? Am I? And finally he was, oh, oh no, no. I I, I was just thinking about something. That was what his voice sounded like, (laughs) but he was, Anyways, um, <laughs> so he started talking to me and he told me his name and stuff and he asked for my number and I gave it to him because I was in college and that's what you do. You meet people and mm-hmm. get to know them. So we decided to hang out, which in college was kind of like a date. You know how that is, um, at least at the time. Anyways. The first time that we hung out or dated or whatever, he was very physically aggressive. Okay. And right. um, when I left, I texted him and I was like, hey, just so you know, I don't really feel comfortable hanging out with you one on one anymore. And, you know, like, I think you're cool, but I'd rather us just, you know what I mean? see each other in public or meet with a group, but I'm not gonna ever do that again. And he said, his response to that was, well, it's not like I raped you. (laughs) That's what he said to me. And I was like, the first sign of crazy was right there. And so I responded like, whoa, like I didn't even insinuate that. I just said, I never wanna hang out with you ever alone. And mm-hmm. probably, you know, just because you said that shit ever again, you know? Who, yeah. Whatever. You've been 86, nigga. Move yep. on. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so you would think that would be the end of it. But the next day he texted me uh, an apology. Like, I'm so, so sorry. That's not who I am. I was drunk. And I was like, okay, I accept your apology. But what I said still stands. We'll never hang out again one on one. And so every single day for like the next two weeks, every day, I was getting apology texts from him like, hey, I'm so sorry. You please like, please forgive me. I need you to know that's not who I am, blah, blah, blah. Just apologizing over and over. And I was still like, bruh, it's fine. You're forgiven. We're good. We're just not going to hang out. Like, I don't know what you want. So finally, he showed up at my door. Yeah. I don't even know exactly now that I think about it, how he knew where I lived, but he showed up at my door and he apologized again face to face this time. And so foolishly, I forgave him. And I was like, okay, fine. I will hang out with you again because I figured like, okay, he keeps going on and on about how that's not who he is and blah, blah, blah. And then now he's actually showing up. Maybe, maybe he's telling the truth. Uh -uh. No, No. he was not. So 
let me tell you about the actual verse date then. So I'm at my apartment with my friends, uh, two of my guy friends actually. He just walked into the door. He literally just walked into the apartment while we were dancing and he was like, oh, okay, so you ready? And I was like, oh yeah, I guess I did say I was gonna do that. So I told him, like, okay guys, I'm gonna go hang out with Tim. You know, I'll see you later. And I left. And from the from leaving my door to our parking lot, he already got weird. Cause I was like, okay, so which one is your car? And he's like, just keep walking. But I'm like, it in which direction? You're like, this is a parking lot. He just, just, just go. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll just go this way since, you know, like maybe this is where your car is. Like, this is already how it's starting off. And I didn't even get in the car. Um, and he's like, <laughs> it's this one right here. <laughs> I get in the car anyways, like even though I'm already annoyed with him. And in this parking lot, I'm telling you, and this made me feel so uncomfortable and so unsafe. He literally goes like zero to 60. And I hate like that type of reckless driving when there's like pedestrians. This is a college parking lot. Like, what are you doing? And then not only that, he starts cussing out everything and everybody that we pass for no reason. And not in a way where they could hear him, but he's like, look at this fucking asshole. What a piece of shit. What a dumb bitch over there, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know these people? Dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, he was, yeah. And I was like, I would really, I really just need you to slow down. And so he was like, what if we're in pursuit of the police? <laughs> I'm like, we're not. He slowed down, but it didn't really matter because he didn't live that far away. And we were almost to his apartment complex. So we get there. And I'm just like, I'm already going to regret this night, but I'm just going to let it, <laughs> I'm going to get it over with and then just go. And I walk into, I walk into uh, his apartment. And the first thing he says to me is go to the restroom and count to 20. I was like, what? He said, go to the restroom and don't come out for 20 seconds. And I was like, what are you? So just go. So. <laughs> I, I went to the restroom and I did that, like, not just because he told me, because I was right at the door and I could have just ran, but I did it to text my friends. So I went in there and sent out like mass text, like, hey, come pick me up right now. Like, this is where I'm at. Whoever is closest, please come get me. Um, and I came out the restroom at the allotted time, of course. Uh, and he was like, okay, so we need to go to my friend's house, but he lives in the same complex. And I'm like, fine, whatever. Like, they'll still be, whoever can get me is going to be able to come and get me. You know, um, this sounds like a setup for a white horror movie. It really <laughs> does. <laughs> it does. But he was black. I know I'm making his voice sound crazy, but he was black. <laughs> Okay, please continue. Oh Go ahead. Um, so, my real break. Oh, first of all, when he closed the door to his uh, to his apartment, he punched it twice. I don't know why, just for whatever reason, he like closed it and then <clears throat> punched his door. And then, as we were walking to his friend's apartment, I'm walking like a normal human being. Mm -hmm. And he is going like, like around every corner, you know, like when you're being suspicious, he's like that for every motion, like, okay. And I'm just like, what the fuck is, <laughs> what's going on? And so, you know, come to think of it, he was probably doing some sort of drug deal for just because of that weird interaction. But um, I'm getting texts back from people like, hey, I'm at work or like I can be there in an hour or like different stuff. And so I'm texting my friends back like, okay, don't worry about it. Well, so-and-so is closer and you know, like I'll tell you what's going on later, stuff like that. Texting them like, I just need to see who can get me. And 
he's talking to his friends for a few minutes and then he comes over and he's like, uh, who are you texting? Brandon! <laughs> we literally yelled this and I don't know none of these people around us. He was like, what the fuck are you texting him? You're here with me. <laughs> and I just, you know how you're so dumbfounded that you just kind of like, what you're the looking fuck? around what? like, what? Are there cameras? Like, who is, like, what? I was so confused. Like, <laughs> anyways, um, this is why I tell the story because, ladies, no, don't put up with none of it. Just trust your gut. Don't ever do this shit. Anyways, we leave. Still, I leave together with him because, again, I don't know these people and I know my friends are on the way. And I get the text of my friend who's closest, like, hey, I'm going to be there in like five minutes. Just, you know, like, just come outside. So I was relieved, like, okay, the ordeal is almost over. We get back to his apartment. And he's like, you like to dance, don't you? Why don't you dance for me? That's literally what he says. <laughs> it, lit it sounds like that, like, unforgivable. I don't know if you remember those unforgivable YouTube videos way in the past, but it sounds like that. It was... It was madness. He, and it was Janet Jackson. It was Janet Jackson's runaway album. So it was like, did he want me to like do some choreography? Like, no, I, I want you to know I did not dance. I did not dance. So let me just get that out there. He said it, sure? but I just looked at him like he was crazy. Like, are you sure you didn't want to dance? Like you didn't think about it? Like maybe I, I should. a thousand percent was not going to dance for him. <laughs> And I love to dance, but and no. All right. Um, so he stops the music abruptly. Like he gets maybe 15 seconds into the song. He stops the music. And then he pulls out this gun and just cocks it and points it at me and says, lay on the couch. And I was like, what? And he was like, just lay on the couch. And all I could feel, honestly, was rage. It was like, I didn't feel any fear. It was just rage and anger. Like, I guess we're both gonna die. Like, I don't know. It just, it felt so much like you motherfucker. Like if this is how I go, like I swear to God, like somehow I'm going to murder you two in this process. Like, I just was thinking like, oh, I'm gonna get you. I, I was pissed. Um, but I did what he said just because he did have the gun. But I did it like with no fear. It was just more like, oof, like looking at him, like just, you, just you wait. Uh, but I got on the um, the couch on my stomach, kind of like this, and he went and pointed it towards the hallway and went through his hallway and came back. And then he was like, okay. The coast is clear. And he put his gun away. First of all, the the coast had been clear. Like nothing, <laughs> nothing had happened. It was just a madman <laughs> with a gun, really, is what happened. So and this is on a college campus. <laughs> Technically, his apartment was one of the off-campus apartments, but it was one of the <laughs> only college students' apartments. Like, no adult, yeah, adult uh -huh. would be living there. Um, yeah, all of this, all of this happened, and in one night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is <laughs> this is all in like I'm telling you, probably like thirty to forty-five minutes. Damn. Like I wasn't even there an hour. Um, but <laughs> my phone started to ring and my phone, and when I had got on the couch, my phone fell to the floor um, and it started to ring. And it was one of those moments like in the movies where you both like look at something <laughs> and you, cause you know, you're both gonna go for it. So both of us looked at my phone a couple times and then we both dove for my phone and I got it because again, I'm huge. I'm agile. Like, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I got my phone. I answered it. And she was like, girl, I'm, I'm outside. Like, come outside. So 
And that was my roommate, my roommate from college who, she was there for me in a heartbeat. She had my back, she was ready. Um, but, um, sorry, I just started thinking about her. Um, but yeah, she said that and I hung up with her. And so I was like, I'm on my way. And I told him literally, I was like, you know, I got church in the morning. So I'm going to go like that's literally what I told him. I'm like, I got to go to church in the morning. So I'm, I'm going to go. And I mean, it was a lie. I wasn't going to church in the morning, but <laughs> it was what I could think of in the moment. Um, I left. He didn't fight it. I got in their car. I told her like she was the first one to hear the story and know about the ordeal. And yeah. After that, with him, literally, obviously, he texted me a million thousand so many times. And I just totally, tr I tried so hard just totally to ghost him. Like, but the text started getting so, like, crazy and threatening that it was like, you have you like, I'm going to go to the police if you keep on bothering me. And so I did. I went to a policeman that I knew um, and he told me you have two options. You can file a police report or you can file a restraining order. Um, if you do a police report, that just means if anything happens, there's already, you know, like a paper trail that he's done some crazy things yeah. versus if you do a restraining order, he's going to have to know about it and that might piss him off for further. So think about which one you're, you want to do. And so, yeah, he eventually stopped is all that I can say to it. He eventually stopped because I ignored him long enough and I never ever saw him on campus because who knows? He might have been like totally faking that he even goes to school. No, he definitely went to school there, but he was certifiably crazy. Like, this isn't somebody who's mentally stable. And mm -hmm. I didn't know. And I don't think he knew. Yeah, a lot of things that were going on back then um, is now being more checked into today. So mm -hmm. a lot of things are... Oof, oh, yeah. Lord. Wow. Well, it's good that you end up a victim. Like like yes. a victim who like really suffered and you did some really bad damage to you it's good that uh you are mm -hmm. able to talk about something like this because it's almost like this thing these things happen every day and mm -hmm. it's one of those things like men can't take no for an answer even when you're being nice you're being the sweetest yeah. you possibly can mm -hmm. so because i even say i'm speaking for a man i can think like okay she said no but let me give her some time to maybe rethink and maybe I can try to make it up. But doing something like that, oh, hell no. Fuck that. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> it's a story that like when it happened, it felt so crazy. And then it was like, I think after all of the text and phone calls and stuff, once he totally fizzled out, and I told like somebody else about it. When I was telling the story, me and that person, like and completely sober, just couldn't stop laughing about every single part of it. And it was like, it's funny now because I came like totally through it and I'm fine. Um, but in the moment, it's crazy. Uh -huh. And for me, it's important for like the reason that I'm okay sharing the story instead of being like, oh, well, that's something personal that happens or that's something that was kind of embarrassing in my past. I think it's important for women to share their stories so that other women, one, can share theirs or two, can have these like stories that are warning them like, yeah, I don't have to be nice. I don't have to forgive this person. Like, I don't have to give in just because they keep on trying. And yeah. So Thanks. if you could t title your this episode of BDC, what would it be? What would you call it? Hmm. Dang. I never have thought of that. Like, I feel like I'm... So <laughs> That's such a good question. Hmm. 
maybe something like because the word nightmare keeps on coming <laughs> a nightmare without brandon <laughs> <laughs> i'm like nightmare on campus but it wasn't on campus and it wasn't very public maybe like no no never forgive them <laughs> Never give them a second chance. Nightmare Trust skeptics. Always say no. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking maybe a nightmare of skeptics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's still good that you're able to share your story or something like that. Because even I remember my times being on campus, like you hear girls talk about, oh, this guy's creepy and all that. And you really don't pay no attention to it. You just think, oh, he's just the weird guy. But somehow, some way, they always get the cute chicks. I can mm -hmm. never understand that. It happens. Mm -hmm. And it's like that mysteriousness to them. But no, mm -hmm. they're just weird. And they got knives and guns. And they think Yes. <laughs> and guns. Yes. Like, <laughs> the fact that he is a gun owner is one of those things that people should be concerned about. But... I digress, <laughs> but it's true. He's probably driving the probable cause of Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on in his life. I do know the only other time that we crossed paths um, was maybe like four years after the fact. Mm -hmm. And I was with Brandon of all people, the one I was texting, because I mean, that was my friend. That's always been my friend. And we were going into, <laughs> I won't say where we were going into, but we were going into a place <laughs> and um, apparently Tim had walked right up like to us and like shook his hand, but I was looking like I was laser focused on the door, like where we were going and I didn't even see him. Mm -hmm. And Brandon was like, you know who that was, right? And I was like, oh wait, who? So, and he was like, that was Tim. It's like that. Tim, Tim, like crazy Tim. I'm like, oh my God, I'm not even gonna look back. Like, <laughs> like, oh, oh wow. I'm not even looking wow. back. That is the past. And no, that's all I know of him. Okay. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on and tell me about your very intriguing uh, dating story. Um, Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. It is because, like I said, you always hear about these things, but you never hear about them in detail until like they become a victim and you see it on the news. So, yeah, not not to like shed any dim light or be negative about it, but more so, that's usually how it happens. Like you'll hear like, "Oh, she told him no." Next thing you know, she's ended up we found her on the side of the road somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, thankfully it's... that did. Yeah, thankfully that didn't happen to you. Honestly, it didn't. Thank you. <laughs> I'm thankful no problem. As well, hey. And so if you, you so ever, much for having me. yeah, if you ever want to come back, and you got more stories you want to share. You know how to reach me. You really do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for sharing. Well, folks, this has been another episode of Bad Dating Chronicles. Remember, we all have those bad dates that we just, we think about, we never think about until now. So if you ever want to talk, hit me up and we can have a good time. So I'm Will. This is my host, Miss B. And we will say, <laughs> talk to you later. Y'all take care now.